Hello everybody, welcome to Bass and Bones Eye. This video, I'm gonna show you real quickly how I modify the Booyah Pop and Pad Crash. You heard me talk about this frog. This is my favorite frog, my favorite color of that frog. And I had to buy a new one, I lost the only one I had. So I'm gonna make a little short video here showing you what I do. Don't do a lot, show you what I do to this, and then I might go ahead and compare it to this lure that I just picked up, and we'll see what we think this one will do that the other one doesn't. So buckle up and hang on. Here we go. So first thing first, you got to get this sucker out of the package, which is hard to do with one hand when you're trying to hold your camera with the other. But look at that, just like magic, I did it. So you have here, and these legs already are fairly short. They're not too bad. And I'm going to explain to you why I like this bait over the others is just for the hookup ratio for me. And they seem to be pretty durable. I usually lose them due to... Uh, Stupid me not changing the line soon enough, often enough, and breaking off during a fish, you know, big hit, and the fish runs off with them. The hooks are durable, stay sharp. I think they're set. I haven't adjusted any of mine out of the package. I like them to be as weedless as they are, and I feel that I get plenty, you know, I catch a fit. If the fish hits it right, and I give them that split second to get it in their mouth and yank, which if you yank too quick, or stuff like that can change you know the hookup ratio but what I like to do and I didn't you know invent this there's been several people out there that's been doing it for years is I take almost an inch off so probably just longer than you know what is going on my finger there I'll cut that off and I always leave one a little shorter than the other so we end up with them about like that now you don't have to go quite that short, that's about an inch off one side and then an inch and a half off the other side. So about a half inch difference, it should help it to walk the dog a little bit. The only other thing I do to this bait is I do add rattles and my OCDs kick in probably that I, I put rattles in them and I put two different size rattles. I put a little one with the uh, bigger balls and then one with the smaller. And that will give you a different sound when they do make a rattling noise, which sometimes depends on where they're at in a the frog. They may not even make a noise, but if they do, if you can hear that, there's a littler tick and then a little harder thumping, ticking sound. So I will stuff both of those up this frog's keister and use it just like that the legs cut I don't mess with these hooks if for some reason you just absolutely aren't getting a good hook set you feel like you're losing too many fish you can bend these just up ever so slightly but I think if you're missing frog fish you're either probably yanking too soon or too light or your setup you're using too light a line maybe mono that's giving too much maybe a rod that's not stout enough these hooks are pretty big and a lot of times both of them are in that bass's mouth trying to you know when you yank you're trying to get those to stick in the mouth at the same time it takes a hard hook set with the topwater uh, soft-bodied frog it's not like a mild just tug on it and you can accidentally get them that way but you want to let this baby go and set that hook so you might try that Mwah. 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 All right, guys, hope you like that quick frog video on what I do with my Booyah Popping Pad Crasher. I do use that frog. I'm not sponsored by Booyah, but I would recommend anybody use that frog. It flat works. Hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, help share this channel, tell your friends, your neighbors, anybody you know about Bass and Bonsai that likes plants, trees, fish, hook them up with this channel. And like always guys, thanks for watching.